Hi folks, Dee Dee Katrin here. Today, super excited to be bringing you our first video tutorial, Time to Stamp with Viva Las Vegas Stamps of 2017. I am starting here with a piece of watercolor paper that has been die cut um, in a tag shape using a Sizzix Tim Holtz die. And I am now gluing down um, some Unwell Studio chipboard in the shape of a poppy pod skelly with some golden gel medium. And then I'm also kind of using a piece of paper to mask the hole that's in the background. I'm not going to tie anything on my tag today. Uh, I'm not going to like feed any strings through the hole or any ribbon or anything like that. I did heat it with a heat tool to make sure that the gel medium was dry before I moved on to the next next section here in which I'm covering the entire tag with Liquitex gesso. This is the professional gesso and I'm giving everything a really nice kind of heavy coat with that but not too heavy where it won't dry because I can just heat it with a heat gun to help it dry real quick and then come back with a second layer the chipboard does have an ash on the edge because it's laser cut, so some of that gesso kind of picked up a little bit of a gray tint. And then also the chipboard's craft colored, so it's going to take more than one um, layer of gesso to cover up. And I want everything to be like stark white when I start adding in my inks. Making sure I get all the cracks and crevices, but I do want my gesso to be smooth on this piece because I'm going to come back with a foam applicator and some distress inks, plus I want to do some stamping. So the smoother the surface for your stamping, the better. Make sure that's heated dry. And now I'm getting out a foam applicator tool and my various colors of distress ink in browns. This mood board totally, totally speaks to my soul. So I love everything kind of vintage and nature inspired bugs and flowers and things like that. Um, I am starting, um, or I am inking the edges of this tag with the vintage photo distress ink and I love how it's got kind of like a little bit of a warm tint to it a little bit of an orangey kind of thing to it and then now I'm kind of spritzing around some water to activate the distress ink and I'm going to use a piece of cloth to lift up the excess water that's pooling and it's going to create a very cool spackly effect now I will say this distress inks are meant for a porous surface and because I covered my um, paper and chipboard with gesso the ink is actually sitting on the surface of that gesso and staying wet a lot longer than you would think um, that it would. So I am using my heat tool quite a bit to help set that ink in. Distress ink does always remain water reactive, but um, if I give it a... Um, like a set kind of with the heat gun, it does tend to be a little bit more permanent than if I just let it sit on the surface of the gesso itself, simply because the gesso is non-porous, where if I had just inked the straight watercolor paper, it would have been a lot more porous. Um, I'm going back in now with the Ground Espresso Distress Ink, which is a lot darker than the Vintage Photo, and uh, I really like kind of the punch that it has. And you'll see that when I did the vintage photo, I spritzed, and then I came back with the the espresso and re-inked and spritzed that as well. So it creates a completely different look to your speckled effect than if you were to just layer the two inks and then spritz water. So keep your keep your kind of experimenting going on, and and uh, never, you know, never don't try new things because they have some some cool and different effects to them. Uh, and then I use the the pad, the ink pad, directly against the edge of the paper to give it a really nice stark brown color. And also I scraped it on the poppy that is there, the chipboard poppy. It's so tall I was able to really get a nice scrape. Now I'm getting out my Waybill invoice background from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. And this is a little distress pad, but it's a DIY distress pad, so it was empty. And I filled it with an archival ink. I really like the raised surface that that has on it. And I'm using um, that stamp. It's Mine is clean cushioned, but I used just my hand to get kind of a kind of grungy effect in the background and just stamped it in a few places. Now I've got out our brand new Death Head Moth. This just came out um, very end of 2016. And I'm using that same archival ink and stamping on a, a scrap of cardstock. Heating that, and then I'm going to fussy cut out all the little pieces, but I'm not going to do it on camera because you don't need to see me do all that work. 
And now I have this really cool, stark, black and white death head moth. Looks really great against our kind of vintage toned background here. And I've got some, um, I use canvas and fibers a lot in my artwork. So I have um, just kind of like a little ball of canvas fibers that I actually get when I rip a canvas and kind of like those fibers that are stringy and kind of hanging around. I hold on to those. I just put them in a little jar. And then um, whenever I need some kind of thick, cool, fibrous material, I pull those out. I want to do a little bit of hand stitching on this tag. So I've got out a piercer. And I'm poking some holes in the edge of my tag to do some stitching with DMC floss. And I am staying with the monochrome um, color scheme that's going on in our monthly inspiration board. So uh, I'm, I've got like a kind of like dark gray DMC floss here. But don't be afraid to add a splash of color. That would look really great in this brown toned piece we have going here. Like a really nice golden yellow or a really dark red. I had both of those and I almost pulled those out. But I didn't. I kept it monochrome. So this is a really simple hand stitch. I'm just doing one cross stitch all the way across the tag. And then later, um, I'm going to do some smaller ones across the bottom. And I'm going to use a little tape here. Sometimes when I tie my DMC floss, I don't get the most perfect, like, kind of taut stitching. So I just usually secure it on the back with a piece of uh, masking tape. Yeah. Um, now I have out this stamp here is by Kat Kerr and it says find your tribe and love them hard. So I've got that and I'm going to stamp that at the bottom of my tag. My little moth, got my little kind of pile here. And I'm going to use the same gel medium, golden gel medium that I used in the beginning of the tag. I put a, a little bit down on the tag and then I put my um, fibers down and then I'm going to put more gel medium and put my moth down. And then the moth is cool because I just put a little crease where the wing meets the body and then the wings now have um, kind of flare up and have a bit of a 3D effect to them so that's cool too. And here I'm kind of looking at the inside of that tag up there where I wasn't able to get with my other foam tool. And I've got this tool here. It's a little pointer and it has foam on the end. So now I'm going to use that and go back and kind of apply some more ink up there to help it blend in. And so it's not so stark white at the top of the tag underneath the chipboard piece. And then at this point, I felt like I could bring in some more of that hand stitching at the bottom. I am going to use a, this ruler here. This is a Tim Holtz ruler um, and my paper piercer. And then I'm going to get a piece of cardboard. So this way I'm not kind of poking holes in my table. I can just poke through. And then once I feel the piercer kind of, it makes like a little popping sound. And you kind of feel it poke through the cardboard. Then you know you can stop. And I'm creating six holes, uh, and I should have paid a little bit more attention. They are a little close to the bottom for what I had intended, but after it was all said and done, the design aesthetic was nice. So I pierced six holes, so I can create six holes on the top and six holes on the bottom, so 12 total. And they're evenly spaced so that I can create three little X's of hand stitching at the bottom here. And then I'm going to flip the tag over and I'm going to stitch, kind of like knot my stitching into place. And this is what I was mentioning earlier, like my stitching in the back wasn't very tight. And I didn't want the stitches on the front to get kind of warbly. So I um, did a little bit of extra stitching and then I will also secure all of this with uh, a piece of masking tape. And I could put like gel medium or something on the bottom too if I wanted, uh, but the, I have the masking tape around so it works well. And to be really secure, I could put some miracle tape on the back and then just layer a whole nother tag. But that's it. So thanks for joining us and stick around because we have a lot of really great tutorials coming up this year from our design team. And you can click here to subscribe and you'll know when stuff comes out. Bye.